Hello, and welcome to A Room. This is going to be a new series that will start with this being the first episode. In this series, I'll be reviewing the anime I watch and sharing my opinion about the anime and the plot synopsis. And today, we're going to be reviewing Mirai Nikki, aka Future Diary. Spoilers ahead for Mirai Nikki. Part 1 The Plot. In the world of Mirai Nikki, the world will be ending soon, and the god of this world must choose a new heir for his throne. The way the new heir will be decided is with a battle royale. Whoever wins the survival game will become the new god of the world and save humanity. To spice up the survival game for each contender, they each have a future diary. This is a device that will predict the future for each person. But wait, another twist. Each person's diary has its own qualities about what it can predict. For example, the love diary will predict the future of the person that the owner is in love with, or the random diary predicts the future of events that happen around the user. The game will end when there is only one person alive in possession of a future diary. There are 12 contestants, and if their diary is destroyed, the owner will die too. When one of the diary holders is set on killing another diary holder, the target will have a dead end message on their diary. However, the diaries will still function like normal, predicting the future and such. Each diary owner can change the future to avoid a dead end or ensure death of another diary owner. Each time the future is changed, the diary displaying the previous future will crackle with static and will display a new message showing the new future. Now that you know about the concept, let's move on to the characters. Part 2. The Characters This anime focuses on the characters of Yukiteru Amano and Yuno Gasai. Yuki is the main male character with the random diary, which has the ability to break random events around him, but not specifically about him. Yuno is the main girl who is madly in love with Yuki and is quite the stalker in the beginning of the show. Yuki is the owner of the first diary, and Yuno is the owner of the second diary. The final three main characters are Aru Akse, Minene Oruru, and Kigo Kirusu. I'm sorry for uh, butchering those names. Aru Akase is a boy detective who shows up about halfway through the anime and plays a big role in the final episodes. Miene is the female terrorist who is also the ninth diary holder. Miene holds the escape diary as her diary. It tells her the best way to escape the dead end. Finally, Kigo. He is a head cop at the local police station, as well as the owner of the fourth diary. The investigation diary tells Kigo about future crimes and events committed in the area. Part 3. Plot Synopsis the anime begins with the main character Yuki going about his normal life. He owns a phone which he records everything around him like a diary. It's shown to us that Yuki doesn't have many friends, which is fine with him. His only friend is the god, Deus Ex Machina, which he thinks is imaginary and all in his head. Yuki wakes one morning to find a message in his diary saying it can now predict the future. At first, he doesn't believe, but after he sees it predict what is on local TV, he believes. Yuki takes full advantage of his new future predicting device, and it changes his life pretty quickly. People take notice, and one person in specific takes notice of Yuki. That person is Yuno Gasai. She approaches Yuki and chases him through the city and corners him in an elevator where she reveals to have a future diary as well. She confesses her love to him and reveals that she is not the real threat right now. They are being stalked by a serial killer who is in possession of the third diary, the murder diary. Yuki and Yuno work together to get Yuki to throw a dart through the third's diary and kill him. The dart throwing is part of Yuki's character because he likes to play darts? Anyway, the third is revealed to be a teacher at Yuki's school and is killed by Yuki and Yuno. The first, Yuki, confronts Deus, and Deus summons all of the diary holders into his god realm and explains the rules of the survival game. Yuki has made a name for himself as the first diary owner because he has already killed the third. The meeting adjourns and people make remarks towards Yuki. Yuki makes an alliance with the second, Yuno. As the first episode ends, Yuki and Yuno are attacked by the Ninth at their school by planted bombs. They almost kill the Ninth, but she escapes with only taking one of Yuki's darts to the eye. The fourth, Kigo, makes an alliance with Yuki and the episodes. The fourth briefs Yuki and Yuno about all the information currently gathered on the diary owners and says he doesn't care about becoming god. He just wants the game to end with the lowest number of casualties. Yuki and Yuno go on a date to a theme park sponsored by the fourth. They have a good time, and Yuno kisses Yuki. The ninth is on the run from the police when the twelfth finds her and takes her to a log cabin where she is hypnotized and interrogated by the twelfth. During the interrogation, the twelfth takes out Miene's eye. Yuki and Yuno arrive at Yuno's house, and Yuki wanders around and eventually opens a door revealing two corpses in Yuno's house. Yuki flees in terror, and Yuno cries, remaining in her house. The next day, Kigo takes the two to the Oketama temple 
where Miyane is suspected of being held. At the temple, they meet the sixth diary owner, Sabuki. She possesses the Thousand League Eyes diary. Hell breaks loose and is the result of the twelfth's mass hypnosis. The twelfth gets killed and the second and first kill the sixth. The ninth is captured by Kigo and is released under unrevealed conditions. Yuno breaks into y Yuki's house while Yuki is picking up his mother from this train station. Yuno cooks a meal for Yuki and his mother and cleans Yuki's house. When Yuki returns home, he realizes that Yuno in his, is in his house trying to meet his mother. And despite his best efforts, Yuno and Yuki's mom, Ria, meet. They get along much to Yuki's dismay, and it is revealed that Yuki's mom is home to take care of a colleague's child because they were killed in the Omekata Temple incident. The child, Risuke, is revealed to be the fifth diary owner. The fifth tries to kill Yuki and Yuno, but gets killed by Yuno. Yuki goes back to a new school and makes friends with Kosaka, Hinata, and Mao. They go to a park and have a good time as friends until Hinata appears to get killed by dogs. Aru appears and guides the remaining friends, plus Yuno, to an observatory where they fend off the dogs, with the use of Yuki's future diary. After the dogs attack, Hinata appears and Mao takes Yuki captive. It is revealed that Hinata is in use of a future diary, but is not the owner of the diary. Aru saves Yuki, and the owner of the tenth diary, Hinata's father, is killed by the fourth, Kigo. Kigo frames the murder of the tenth on Yuki and Yuno. Yuki and Yuno go on another date out of the city, and when they return, they are taken into custody for questioning. They escape from the police and go rogue until they meet with the ninth and make an alliance. They hold Kigo's wife and son hostages for leverage against Kigo. Kigo is now revealed to now wanting to become the new god to save his son who has a terminal heart disease. During this encounter, the fourth is killed by Yuki, which saves Yuno from being held by the fourth. The ninth is taken into police custody, but escapes days later, and Yuki and Yuno leave the city to once again go on another trip. On the train, it is revealed that Yuno has two human skulls in her bag, presumably from the two corpses that Yuki saw earlier in Yuno's house. Worried about Yuki's safety, Aru contacts Nishijuma, the new head of the police, and they narrow down Yuki's whereabouts, enlisting the help of Kosaka, Hinata, and Mao. Hinata is captured by Yuno, and Kosaku, Aru, and Mao are trapped in a room filled with gas. Yuno is trying to kill them when Aru reveals they found three corpses on Yuno's property. Kosaka's phone is turned into a future diary by the 8th, who label him as an apprentice. Everyone then escapes, leaving Yuno behind. It is revealed that the 8th diary is a server which can create other future diaries through a blog. The 1st and 2nd encounter two 7ths and have a fight which results in the 7ths taking both Yuki and Yuno's diaries. The two 7th diary owners are the exchange diaries, and each can predict the future of the other because they are in love. Yuki is hospitalized, and Miene helps Yuki with physical rehabilitation. Yuki's dad visits in him in the hospital and trains with Yuki. During the last part of training, Yuki's father reveals that he and Yuki's mom got a divorce because he was bad with money. The first and second face off against the seventh again and win, killing them both. Yuki's father flees from the tower and lands near Reio. He kills her to get away. Next, it is revealed that Yuno killed her parents because of the abuse she received from them. The next day, Yuki follows his father to a shrine where he is killed. Enraged, Yuki resolves to kill the attackers. The 11th and the 8th are revealed to be John Brockus, the mayor of Sakurai Simi, and Kamado, the owner of the orphanage Mother's Village. The 1st and 2nd plot to ally with the 8th for her assistance in defeating the 11th. They succeed in trapping the 11th, but he uses high power signal jammers to render the orphan's diaries useless. Yuki and Yuno take this opportunity to betray the 8th and kill all the orphans. The 8th escapes with the 11th and forms a temporary alliance. It is at this point that Aru reveals the third body found at Yuno's house belongs to the person of Yuno Gasai. Hearing this, Yuno pleads with Yuki to stay with her, and he does. The 1st and 2nd track down the 11th and the 8th, but fail to kill the 8th. The 11th locks himself in a bank safe and thinks he is safe, because of the retinal scanner required to enter. The retinal scanner only has the mayor's eye and the Gasai family eye programmed into it. The mayor believes that the current Yuno cannot open the safe because the real Yuno was found dead. The ninth gives her life by blowing herself up in the safe and attempts to open it and fails, and Yuki leaves. After Yuki leaves, Yuno opens the safe and kills the eleventh. Aru visits Deus, and it is revealed that the god cannot bring back people from the dead. It is also revealed that Aru was created to be an observer of the survival game. He returns to Earth and spreads the information about the dead to all of his friends, Kosaka, Hinata, 
Mao, and the Eighth. All five of the remaining characters are killed by Yuki, who believes they are lying, and that he will be able to bring back his dead parents and everyone who was killed. Aru, when killed, shows a message to Yuki as he dies. At this point, it is not clear what the message says, only that it was stunning. The world is predicted to end on July 28th. That is also the day that Yuno gets her happy ending with Yuki where they become one. Yuki and Yuno become one, and Yuno admits to knowing the whole time about not bringing back the dead. Yuno turns on Yuki, trying to kill him and become god. At this point, Murumuru, Deus' assistant, shows Yuki the whole truth. There are multiple worlds like multiverses. The current living Yuno is from the first world where she wins and becomes god. She's obsessed with Yuki, so she went back in time to play the survival game and be with Yuki. She killed herself in the world we see Yuki in, World 2, and took her place. This is where the third corpse is from, and why it tested to be Yuno Gasai. Yuki watches Yuno kill herself in Yuki's world and becomes angry with Yuno. It is also revealed that Muru is the Muru from the first world and is siding with Yuno to help her win. Yuki is almost killed, but Miene saves him. It is revealed that right before the explosion killing her, Deus saves her, giving her half of his power and knowledge, knowing that Muru will betray him and alter the outcome of the game. Yuno goes back in time, creating a third world, followed by Yuki and Miene. They fight, trying to prevent Yuno from killing the third Yuno. Yuki breaks Yuno's resolve to kill him, and Yuno kills herself, making Yuki the new god. Miene lives on in the third world. A thousand years later, Yuki has done nothing with his god powers and still mourns the death of Yuno. Part 4. Conclusions In conclusion, this anime was terrible. Yuki is such an unlikable character and makes decisions that will often make you pull your hair out, metaphorically. His character development is slow and uninteresting. Yuno is enjoyable for an, for an obsessive girl character. I think that she is done well and is held back as a character by chasing after Yuki. Her psyche is broken from the years of abuse from her parents and her memory editing. It makes her character believable. Overall, the show is slow and boring. It has an interesting concept, but the characters make it such a boring execution of the combat that ensues. This show is a waste of time and something you should watch or read a summary of. That's not to say the show didn't have good parts. The backstory and main story with the synth diary owners was good and made them seem like actual characters that I cared about. The final two episodes were good. The character of Muru made her place as one of the better characters in these final two episodes by becoming more prominent in the story and changing things up a bit with her powers and personality. The ending of the anime, I thought, was pretty terrible. How Yuki didn't act upon the world slash world with his power seems stupid to me. Along the way to becoming a god, he made a bunch of promises to people to carry their dreams and feelings with him. The ending is anticlimactic and didn't do the whole rest of the show justice. Very few parts of this anime stuck out, and the parts that did were all too short. The good does not outweigh the bad, and this anime is not one to go on my watch list again. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. It really means a lot to us. I'd also like to say that this review is not an excuse to not watch this anime. If it sounds like something you would enjoy, by no means should you hold back on watching this. This review was just my opinion on this anime. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. Also, post comments about anything down below. If you have criticism on the video, we would love to hear your feedback. That's it for now. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.